are gay people going to hell? No, not because they're gay. Everybody, we go to hell because we choose to reject the grace of God. The so, only way you can go so to hell is if, you reject the If you a gay reject, person accepts, accepts Christ. Jesus Christ, he's going to heaven. Okay. Without a doubt. Okay. Fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair enough. Rick Warren, and we know that over the past number of years, Rick Warren has swung wildly to the left. And in regards to, you know, being ecumenical and woke and everything else. And it was just a few weeks ago they did the segregated for African-American only people meeting and all this kind of stuff. So two left wings, woke as can be. Yeah, well, well, if, you got, if you got two doors, one says right. this one goes to life with eternity with God. Right. And this one says eternity without God. Right. If I walk out the door that says eternity without God, do I blame God for that? No, that's right. my choice. Right. That's my choice. And so I choose to re to to go to hell. Mm -hmm. You have to do almost the impossible. Doesn't that go against straight and narrow is the way and few are those who find a historic night at Saddleback Church happened as they ordained their first female pastors. Now. Right out of the gate, this is not biblical, and this is evidence that this is no longer operating like a church. Um, there was a lot of speculation over Rick Warren for many years, and uh, many people have been helped by some of his work. But more and more, the desire to compromise and unite with uh, religions that are not true and not biblical uh, it has caused people to recognize that he is headed for a bad path. And this is the path that liberal theology takes. It starts to undervalue the word of God as the authority, and it starts to question uh, things like this. Like, Would I be right, here's my question, would I be right to infer from your biblical commitments that your view of God's sovereignty, that you embrace the doctrine of unconditional election? Yes, I do. Of course I do. In other words, God can, yeah. does, choose, who will be saved right. before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. Would that be right? Yes. M my qualifier on that is, I say, if I find a verse that tends to say something else, a whosoever will may come, mm -hmm. I believe them both. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, my... Now, I heard one of the workers uh, saying, why are they taking out walls and gonna have open space on either side? And somebody actually said, Rick Warren will have a place for all his hot air to go. So just dissipate really easily. All right, take out your message notes. Tonight is a historic night. We're going to ordain our first three women pastors. <laughs> along with our new CR leader and along with three new elders. But we don't do anything without a biblical basis. So. Uh, I'm going to run through this really quickly. You know that I'm going to speed through this when I have already filled in the blanks on some of it. We don't base our practices on popular opinion or what culture tells us to do. Doesn't really matter what any other church does, what any other organization does. We don't. The Bible says the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. The Bible says do not copy or conform to the pattern of this world. We don't base our practices on man-made traditions, okay? Jesus said, it's useless to worship me if you replace what God commands with your own made-up rules, Matthew 15, 9. I, love, I always have loved this inter interaction. The Pharisees asked Jesus, why don't your disciples follow the traditions? And Jesus replied, why do you break the commands of God for the sake of your traditions? And it You're never going to find another Baptist who agrees with you completely on everything. There are Baptist brothers here today who don't believe Jesus died for the whole world. But we imagine somehow get along with them. So as Western culture grows more dark, more evil, more secular, we have to decide, are we gonna treat each other as allies or adversaries? Are we going to keep bickering over secondary issues? Or are we going to keep the main thing the main thing? We need to finish the task, and that will make God smile. Thank you, everybody. I love you.
I introduce to you Dr. Al Mohler. Mr. Chairman, I, I just come to this microphone in the event that it is in order for me to speak. I'm speaking as a messenger of the Third Avenue Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. I served on the committee that brought the Baptist faith and message in 2000 that was overwhelmingly adopted by this convention. My concern is as a churchman, a theologian, and uh, someone who loves this convention as I know everyone in this room does. If we eventually have to form a study committee over every word in our confession of faith, then we're doomed and we're no longer a confessional people. And the spirit in which they bring this. But I am a confessionalist. This is a confessional denomination. We say what we believe in specific words that are the Baptist faith and message. The moment we start to, of necessity, have study committees to decide what the words mean. The words mean what Southern Baptist said in the year 2000. At that time, the word pastor was used by the committee and adopted by the convention because we were told that is the most easily understood word among Southern Baptists for pastoral teaching leadership. I have to hope we still have that much clarity and that churches that use the word pastor mean it. Mr. Chairman, thank you for this opportunity. If a guy's having a problem with pornography and he's watching TV, he doesn't just say, no, I don't want this, I don't want this. He just flips the channel. The moment you change the channel, it, the, the temptation loses its power on you. Do not, listen, here's a pastor telling this, do not resist temptation. Do not resist temptation? Yeah. And let me tell you why. Says the pastor. Yeah, let me tell you why. <laughs> what you resist persist but because the whole time you're focused on it